boom, here we are. And this is Matt Shatz, number 24. And uh, a Saturday night, when everyone else is watching Eurovision, here I am sat here with the, the one and only lead vocalist with magnificent band, Doomsday Outlaw, the one and only Mr. Phil Poole. How are you? I'm um, very well, thank you. Very, very, very much looking forward to Eurovision, actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, you got any you, favorites? You to, yeah. um, well, you know, we did, uh, we had a bit of a sweepstake with some people, and I got, I got, I haven't heard it yet. I got drawn out Armenia. I got no idea. I don't know. I, I, I got no idea. I don't Looks know. Every, yeah. It's a bit like Grand National, really, isn't it? You know, not, you know, you, sort of, you put sort of number on a couple of horses in the sweepstake, and then the first, they fall at the first fence, and you're looking around going, was that it? You know? Yeah, I think I've, I've decided not to listen to it, and I just thought I'll just wait for the night, see how it is. I'll know within five seconds whether I throw right. my money in the good man. Yeah, well, like, the ones the ones I, I quite like the look of was um, the German entry. Lost a fan, I'd heard of him anyway, so they're yeah, sort of uh, quite good. And I think the Australian entry, Australia and Europe, who knew um, their entry looks yeah. quite good. But we shall see. Enough of that. Yeah, it's, now it's, it's always fun. We. Yeah. We have we have a connection actually because um, I sing for a band called Ransom and uh, yes. the former singer Ransom Alice is now is, is guitarist with your with your band or uh, uh, alongside you and the funny thing is I've never actually met him in person I, I just turn up places where we're playing and they, they tell me all about him but it, it, it struck me on to, to have a look and have a listen to you and then I think it was sometime last year I heard the track Runaway and I was absolutely blown away I just thought wow the, your vocals just soar. They went from down, from up and high. And then I, I started doing a little bit more research as we do. And then uh, I, I started looking through what the superlatives is, what people were saying about you, sort of co comparing you to sort of Coverdale and Hughes and, and Steve Overland and, and, and people like that. And, and and you really have that beautiful voice. Where does that voice come from? No, thank you so much for that. Uh, um, yeah, I, 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 obviously it's just, it's something that I always loved doing right from a very early age. I mean, my dad, it was my dad who got me into that kind of music. Certainly, I always loved David Coverdale. I think one of my biggest vocal influences in terms of well, vocalists, I was always a huge fan of Chris Cornell. Mm -hmm. um, that kind of it was really that first Audio Slave album. I'd, I'd, I'd yeah. sort of I'd always liked singing, but that first Audio Slave album really that's the it was when that came out. That was the first time. I mean, I would have been whatever age I was then at the time. Um, that kind of made me say, you know, I want to, I want to being a band <laughs> you know, I really want to be in a band and that kind of but yeah uh, all of that kind of classic rock stuff and Steve Marriott and David Coverdale and you know those those kind of vocalists that's kind of what I've always what I've always listened to that's kind of what's always been what I've loved um, so I've, you know maybe some of those influences come out in my singing style at times you know they do. You've got. I mean, you're a very sort of kind of anti-rock star approach. You know, uh, it was just great. You're very relaxed on stage. I've seen you perform a few times, and you and you wander over this kind of like correct charisma that uh, kind of reminds me of, of a lot of things. It's interesting you mentioned Chris Cornell. I actually saw them on that Audio Slave tour when they came over at Brixton Academy, and I was just you yeah. know his voice. His voice just soared. It, it absolutely did. Um, yeah. And, but you but you have that about you, uh, and you've got this very. Um, charismatic way about you on stage and, and it's very laid back and it's and i noticed behind you got loads of comics on the wall so what's all that about tell me about the comics <laughs> yeah oh yeah a bit of a uh comic comic book nerd as well you know i, I collect all kinds of comics graphic novels and, and, and everything so yeah you kind of got the hulk thundercats up there there's more there's yes. well I, I could take i could take you around the room and yeah do it do it yeah my... we do that yeah it makes it more interesting show yeah. me show me show me so, so my house is full of it's full of stuff so we've got that one on the wall there we've got thor and dr strange and Oh, yeah, yeah, I won't. Uh, I won't, I won't take you downstairs in the, uh, in the cabinet. So all, like you've gone all you gone all quiet, Phil. You have to come forward again. Sorry, is he, have you have you got me back there, mate? I got you back. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah, went to I see wanna... the, the Guardians of the Galaxy film um, the other day. Really enjoyed that. That was great fun. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, no, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I mean, I'm yeah, huge, huge Marvel fan. Well, just comic book fan in general. Yeah. Um, yeah, I kind of um, one of my favourite moments take, taking my little boy to um, what was it that the the last like, Avengers one that was uh, yeah kind of Brilliant. ten years building up to that moment. Yeah, I I, I I I love all that stuff. Man. No, it's great. You know, I I, I know you're a family man. You know, and, and being one myself, yes. I, I took great pride in, in looking at you and, and the new the birth of new baby. How proud you were! And you have three children now, and a lovely lovely wife Emma. 
and 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 you're proud yeah. of that. And, and and I wondered how it sort of um, sort of affects you, like being being in a in, in a rock band, touring like you do, and playing like you do, and and having that same thing as as the family man as well. I mean, yeah, obviously it's a it's a fine balance, like like with anything in life, you you make things work. You know, I'm very fortunate that I've got a very very supporting uh, supportive wife in Emma, you know, who, who like I say, um, lets me go out and, and, and do and do these things, you know. It kind of, the the album that came out, it kind of fell right at the time that she was due to give birth. I mean, the album came out on the 4th of February. Um, our little girl, who's now th- three months old, so three months old, she was three born on the 14th. Yeah, wow. so she was she she was born on the uh, fourteenth of February, little Valentine baby, all oh, wow. well, Valentine's treat. Yes, yeah, definitely, man. And but so that it kind of fell at, at that time. So we have kind of it's not that we've taken a taken a break, but obviously these 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 last couple of months, um, you know, we might not have been as active on the gig scene as we otherwise might have been. But you know, again, the lads are really understanding about that. It just it it is what it is. You know, life happens and. Uh, just when there, when are, there, are more, come, there are more important things. I mean, I, I definitely put music on the back burner when when my two were were, were born, and uh, and 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 you realise the priorities. It makes you realise how insignificant you really are when you got a little one to take care of. Well, yeah, yeah, you have to, you have to do, you know, you have to prior, prioritise and stuff. But you know, things are sort of settling down now, and it's it's nice that we've got a lot of stuff going on in the background that we're open to announce soon, and it's going to be a. It's going to be a very, you know, a very busy second half of the year. Um, so yeah, look, looking forward to obviously our, our my favourite place in the world is to be at home with my wife and kids. You, you know, um, but we're I'm also really looking forward to getting back out there and um, playing some shows with the lads. You know, it's a nice it's a nice release. Then you you have all that pent up stuff. I mean, I remember when when my son was born, and uh, I'd been watching the one of the Formula One races, and I. I set up the nappy tray and, and and the whole thing so I could try to copy it, see if I could do it in 15 seconds, was change a nappy, clean it, get it all sorted, and then get get him down. And I got it down to a T at the I said 15 seconds was as quick as I could do it, but that was uh, that was it. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, you- I, I, I've, I've, I've found I found it. I mean, I've got a boy and two and two girls. I found that it's I found it's a lot easier with girls. It's a lot yeah. easier with girls. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, well, specific, specifically, I mean the the the, the nappy changing because we as we as guys know that you know as soon as the air gets to it, then that's it. You sort of yeah, you get it. You you're getting covered. <laughs> you're getting covered. There's, there's no way about it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not like it's, that with girls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 it's a whole different ball game, or or, or not, as the case may be. Right. Yeah, let's well, go, yeah, let's well, go. Yeah, I was going to say, let's go one. back. Let's go back. We we can talk about babies all night and people out there going, "What the hell are they talking about?" Anyway, um, Suffer More was that? That was the debut album, was it? That was the first album that you that you that you came out. Was that about two thousand and sixteen, something like that? Yeah, it was. So, I mean, the, the uh, Doom's Outlaw. I mean, they they were a band before I joined. They actually released an album again that was uh, released off their own back um, called what was it called now? Uh, Black River. Black and that River. was a very that, that was a very, very different. They sounded very different before I joined. Basically, yeah. they were very. They were much more metal, a lot more, a lot grungier, um, he, heavier, you know. Um, but that was, you know, the the vocalist that they had at the time. That was kind of the style that they were able to do. Mm-hmm. Um, they, for whatever reason, weren't happy with him, and you know, I, I found them on uh, jo- as a site called Join My Band. <laughs> um, I'll put a post on there saying, you know, I mean, I, I, I hadn't sang for a couple of years. I kind of gave up with it. I'd, I'd been in, I'd been in bands and I'd done all of that, and I'd kind of fallen into the, um, like the function band thing, which was all right. I was making, I was making good money doing that as well. Yeah. You know, doing people's weddings and all that kind of stuff. I, I'd done that for a few years. Uh, I kind of fell out of love with it for, for a bit. I could just sort of lost my, lost my spark. Uh, for for performing, you know, so I, I, I kind of gave up and didn't really do anything for a while, and then I went to go and see a band with my brother called uh, Future of the Left, I believe, down in Islington, and I was watching this band. We had a few beers, which definitely helped, um, and I just decided while I was stood there watching this band, it was like actually I want I, 
I want to start singing again. So I put an advert on during my band while I was in the mosh pit watching... <laughs> watching in the middle of the gig? Watching my band. Yeah, in the middle of the gig when my brother's telling me off saying, get off your phone. <laughs> saying, no, no, it's, trust me, this is, this is an important life-changing <laughs> moment. So, um, so yeah, I put that on and the, and the lads found me on there, got in touch. And then, yeah, we got together and we got writing very, very quickly within nine months it was within nine months of me joining the band we'd written and released suffer more um off our own back and within a week of of that coming out i think mm-hmm. um we would we'd been signed to to frontiers um which was great at the time so yeah it was obviously it was, it was just thankful the lads found me you know well i think some things are meant to happen i, I do like the way it was happening i used to in the moment in the mosh pit right i want to find a band and, and doing it like that <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> that'll be yeah. the film. That'll be the film they make yeah. about you. That'll be it. That'll, yeah. be, that'll be that scene. Oh, that didn't really happen, did it? No, it really, it really did. Uh, but it, I no, mean, I did. <laughs> Sorry, go on. no, I was say you, you moved on from there. Um, you're you're based in Leicester, aren't you? Is that Leicester? Or you're up in Leicester? That's all I Yes, yeah. So yeah, we kind of obviously because that's how we we I've found the guys. Um, so we're kind of from from all over, you know. Uh, that they they were originally based in. In Derby, but now Indy has moved to Sheffield. We had a bit of a lineup change um, last year, obviously. Uh, mm-hmm. Not last year, year, year before even. Um, with Nick coming in on drums and Rowan coming in on guitar, so we're kind of spread out now. So I'm I'm in Leicester. Nick and Indy are in Sheffield. Alex is in Manchester, and Rowan's in Birmingham. So trying to trying to get everyone together, the the logistics of that. Can be an absolute nightmare, but we, yeah. we make it work. Yeah, yeah but, well, ACDC managers, don't they? Someone in Australia, someone in America, someone in wherever. They just say, right, let's get the band back together. I think you're yeah, playing the um, you're playing the Tap and Tumbler a couple of weeks after we are actually. I think um, we're doing um, the, the one in Nottingham. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Sixteenth so, uh, of June. Yeah, that's right. June, yeah, yeah. As, as I say, June's kind of the month where we start to get back in into it uh the third of june we're at love rocks festival which is a, a that's a brilliant little festival we, we, we played there the other year down in uh, bournemouth um it's just, it, you know if, if, if the sun's shining it was great you know it, it's, it's a really really a really good crowd um some good some some good bands on um we're gonna set off extra early because the last time we played it i set off i was due to get there Three hours before we went on, which was plen- plenty of time. Um, and there was a big accident on the motorway on the way down and I got stuck. And I made it to that festival ab- about five minutes before we were due to go on stage. Oh, I mean, that's a singer's right. MO, that is. You just walk on it, give me the mic, here yeah, we go. I've got everyone looking, looking at me. I got, I got in the car park, ran ran to the stage. <laughs> yeah, and they were, I mean, they were literally stood at the side of the stage with the guitars over the shoulders, ready to go on to just go and you know, do an instrumental set. And I've gone ringing them saying, look, I'm, 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 I'm nearly there. I'm coming. Trust me. I'll be there. And then we got on there and then, and, and it was great, you know. Um, but sometimes these things happen, you know, there's nothing you can do about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we uh, in our first gig with our, with our, with our new drummer, he, he, we were two pub, pubs called the Barley Mo. And he was setting right. up, he was setting up in the other one. And we were all there, Wait, where, where's his drummer? Where is he? And he was setting up, he said, I thought I didn't recognise any of the band members. <laughs> so he travels <laughs> in the band now. <laughs> right, <laughs> wow, yeah. <laughs> it's all good. So that's good. So um, tell me about, I've, I've listened to, I was listening to some of the tracks. Uh, one More Sit, I'm a, I'm a massive fan of. I love that. I love that song. I think it's a, it's a brilliant track. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, in some, some stately home. Is that in some stately home you did the video in front of? Yeah, you know, someone asked me the other day actually where where that was, and I, I could I couldn't remember. It was it was it was a, it's a, an amazing place, this stately home that we went to. We actually recorded uh, two videos there on the same day. We recorded one more sip, and then another video for a slower song um, called Little Things. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, we we did those both on the same day. But that that place was was mad, absolutely huge, and the ba- the basement on underground it had its own like its own. Uh, uh, chapel yeah. under, underground all carved in the stone and everything and it, I mean it was really really creepy it's not the sort of place that you know if you've sort of like all those kind of ghost programs that they go talking yeah. to and all that sort Ooh, of what was that oh uh, my god did you feel yeah. that yeah. honestly my missus she she loves all that crap <laughs> it's not for me <laughs> but she loves all of that yeah she she yeah she'd have hated being in the house but it, yeah it was it was amazing it was a great day 
We did we did something well, years ago. I remember. I mean, I thought I dreamt it, but we disappeared to this house near down where I lived, down in Guildford. And um, we went out on a little boat. We jumped into someone's back garden. It was on a lake, and we found this underwater dome, and we went down underneath it and came back wow, up yeah. again. And they found all these devil signs and the Pentagon and everything. And this this home we weren't supposed to be in there. We we got yeah. out. And then some, I thought I dreamt it until my son quite recently found it and said, that's the place you went to, isn't it? I said, it does exist. You know, <laughs> you know, it does exist. Yeah, yeah Mr. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, somebody Crowley, A. Crowley or somebody lived there before. Right. <laughs> wow. So, right, so that's the future now. So we've got some exciting news you're not allowed to tell us about. I love that. An exclusive we can't do. We've got um, lots of <laughs> gigs coming up. All this pent-up aggression of a, of a paternal father who's, who's had enough of the kids and he wants to go out and rock on stage and then come back. Yeah. Get it all off his chest. Yeah. That's kind of it, is it? Yeah, but you know, um, like I said, I, I'm I'm in the best place I've ever been in my life. It's it's you know, life's very, very good and very, very happy at the moment. You know, there's there's a reason that the three albums that we've done with Suffer More that I've done with, with the, I've done with Doomsday Outlaw, sorry, are called Suffer More Hard Times and Damaged Goods. There's a running theme through all of that, and there's kind of that running theme through a lot of my lyrics and a lot of my songwriting yeah I was um, ask you about that yeah you know but that's because life wasn't always so great mm -hmm. um for various reasons some of that my own making some of it not you know stuff happens uh but right now you know life's pretty great and obviously with the kids and the band everything that's going going really well um couldn't be happier you know although that's not always the most conducive to writing music i always find yeah. I can write songs a lot easier when I'm miserable. When you're upset. <laughs> but it's just going yeah. to have a row with the missus, go still out, and then come back. Oh, I've got a song. Great. That's it. But yeah. Yeah, I, I, yeah it's, it's, it's a lot easier when I'm when I'm annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask you, I, I, read, I was reading through your lyrics because you printed all uh, a lot of the lyrics on the site and it's good to go through. And I always like to know, you know, lyricists myself, I like to go through and see where someone comes from. And I did sense a lot of pain, a lot of angst from the past, a lot of stuff that you obviously you've been through. And now, you can really appreciate where, where you are right now. And, and you, you actually answered that question for me. So I mean, that's so good to see. Um, but, you know, as, as a singer, as a performer, as, as someone moving forwards and where you're going to go, and you can always go back to reference points. I always find you can always go back to a place which has destroyed you or, or, or given you a hard time. It's always, it's always in there. And if you can tap yeah. into that, it's always possible to bring that out and bring up that emotion of how you felt at that particular time, a, a song or a smell. I mean, do you feel that or...? Yeah, absolutely. It, it's like you say, it's ne it's never gone when you when you've been through those kind of hard moments and those hard times in in life. Um, yeah, it's it's always there in the background in some way because at the end of the day, those are the things that have shaped the person that you are yeah. for good and bad. Um, so there's you know, like I said, yeah, it's it, it's always there somewhere. Um, so yeah, if you can sort of tap into that and and find some creative outlet for it, that's that's. Yeah, that's that's kind of what you need to do. You do something which I, I really like. I'm always I'm always part of this. You know, I'm coming from. I've got a book out at the moment. People are sick of me talking about it, but it's out there about oh, a yeah, band I was in <laughs> years ago. And there's something you do in the Runaway video which I really like, where they focus on your face and you just give that sort of kind of yeah, all right, I'm here, and, and it's really good. It's a really kind of like okay, all the people who had a pop, and all the people in my past, all the things that have gone wrong. Here I am. I'm in my happy place. And I don't know if you're aware of. Of the, of the the bit I mean, but it just looks so cool. Yeah, uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, I do. I do know. I think I do that quite a bit on stage, and it's not even necessarily a conscious thing. I kind of think the way that I am on stage and, and the way that way I perform, there's no there's no thought put into it or thought process or like I say conscious effort to do to do anything. I think it's actually a very apt description of of what you've just said about that. I'm in my happy place, you know, away from my uh family and my kids and, and, and my wife and everything after, after that being on that stage is my happy place yeah and no matter yeah. how anxious or or nervous or anything else that i'm feeling as soon as i start singing you know i'm i'm all good <laughs> and i, I could yeah, i could well. stay I could, I could stay up there all day quite happily it's just it's just kind of that's that's what i love doing you know it's always yeah. been that way it, and, and, it re and it really shows in the I mean, we're bound to be on the same festival at some point in the near future, and then we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll do a. I mean, I'm not drinking at the moment, so we'll we'll do something. I don't know. <laughs> it may come back. <laughs> yeah, no, we'll. Uh, yeah, well, I'll say I've only just only just come back to I've, myself. Obviously, obviously, you know, my wife's only just, you know, three months ago gave birth. So uh, yeah, she. So obviously, she wasn't drinking. So I kind of 
laid off it as well. Um, so yeah, we're we're just getting used to have, have, having a drink again. And it kind yeah. Of, <laughs> No, I'm it allowed is, myself champagne. Champagne. I'm allowed to have champagne. If the champagne game, okay. I'll take that. That's uh, that's my little oh, yeah, Otherwise, that's, enough, that. no, that's all right. <laughs> it's World Cocktail Day today. Did you know that? I mean, I don't know if you're aware of that. I didn't, but that makes me. I think, yeah, I'm gonna have to go out to the shop and get some stuff, com- cocktail stuff in for Eurovision. I think that's yeah, uh, that makes sense. Well, my, my wife is, uh, is is opposite me, and she's cooking something very exciting. I don't know what it is, but uh, it looks it looks it smells gorgeous. So I'm I'm thinking I went for a good night. Um, anyway, listen. <laughs> Phil, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, talking with you. Um, uh, you're a lovely no, guy. No. You've got a great voice. Um, we'll, we'll definitely meet up soon somewhere, one, one, of, the, one of the festivals, I'm sure. Um, um, yeah. Give my regards to Alice. Everywhere I've played, people still say, ask about him. Um, you know, Can't you get about a decent singer back? The good singer you used to have. Where is he? Oh, he's playing for Doomsday Outlaw now. He's, 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 he's doing well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, 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 I'll pass you uh, your best regards on to him, yeah. Will do. Uh, listen, mate, you have a great love, love to your family. Um, and um, you've you got your priorities absolutely right. And, and I love that. And um, and um, and we'll speak soon. And I'll, I'll put this out sometime next week. So we'll know how Armenia did in Eurovision by the time this comes out. Yeah, well, uh, fing- fingers crossed because I've got 100 quid riding on it. <laughs> <laughs> on Armenia, 100 quid on Armenia. <laughs> Oh, dear. Good luck with that. (laughs) All the best, mate. Take care. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye.